Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome back. And uh, in this video, I want to cover our first example or examples of using assembly language to um, discuss uh, how we can do some basic uh, arithmetic uh, instructions or operations. Okay, so. Um, what we're really looking at, let's just take a, a basic uh, example here. Let's imagine we have a, a really simple uh, C instruction. And all we're trying to do is add two variables together and store the result in a variable. Okay, so we've got, let's imagine these are all integers. Uh, we have uh, B plus C and we're going to store the result in A. Okay, so sounds simple enough, right? Now, what we want to do is we want to take this example and say, well, what does this look like? if we were gonna do the same thing, uh, but we were gonna do it in assembly language. In particular, they, um, we're gonna look at the um, arm leg V8, uh, which is, a t I know it's a terrible pun, arm leg uh, V8 uh, instruction set, okay? Which is, they, they all really, the, the assembly language is all similar across different assembly languages anyway. Okay, so let's just think about what's going on under the hood a little bit. Let's think about what's going on when you just add two numbers and store the results somewhere in terms of what's happening inside of your computer when that's occurring, okay? Now, when that happens, we wanna remember is that the information is being stored somewhere, okay? If we look in your computer's uh, memory, okay, you're gonna have some sort of address Okay, you're going to have some sort of address where those variables are being stored in memory and then you have that kind of mapping of the address to a look where you're going to store the value right so a is stored some location uh, in your computer's memory and storing a value same with b same with c okay so if we had for example obviously five four stored here What's going to happen is we're going to take those results, and this is super simple, right? And we're going to store the result here in that location. Okay. Now, the key thing I want you to keep in mind doing that is um, we need to remember that this information is being stored somewhere. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to particularly um, assembly language is makes that very very apparent, and we would write this similar expression in assembly language like this, where we have add is our operation, okay? We're asking the processor to add two pieces of information, okay? And then the first thing that we give it here is the destination, okay? The destination, where is the information, the result gonna be stored, okay? And what that's gonna be is something called a register, okay? So let's imagine that A is stored in a particular register, okay? Particular register. Now what a register is, we'll see this a little bit more detail in a moment, but a register is basically a area that's actually part of your processor where we can store information and the key thing about it is we can read and write to it really, really fast, okay? Uh, we'll go deeper into that later on and look how registers relate to other types of memory. But for now, um, we're always going to be storing and operating using these registers at, as the um, of where the information is being stored and where it's going to be um, both read and written to. Okay, so let's imagine that a that variable a is in register zero. Okay, and that b is in register one and C is in register two, okay? And these, so these are our source registers. So this is another way to think of it is we're, we're effectively doing this, okay? And we're gonna notice how it's being written. This is a common way in which we see this um, is that we have, right? We have the operation, right? We have the operation, okay? We have the destination and then we have the, the source registers, okay? Right. Now, in reality, we're not gonna use nice clean letters or, or words that we have nice descriptive variable names, okay? Instead, what we have is registers indicating where the um, information is being stored, okay? All right, um, that's kind of the same thing I was just showing. 
let's take a look at at um, I'm going to open up a emulator, an ARM emulator, and we'll get a, bit, a little bit of a better sense of what's going on with our registers. Okay, so if we open this up, uh, one thing I want to point out. So I'm in this emulator here. Notice I could we could see all of these R0 down to R13. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I have is I actually have 16 registers in this emulator, 16 registers. So I have 16 places where I could store read or write information. Okay, it's actually a really, really small amount. Okay, we'll, we'll kind of see in this emulator, we'll look at 16, somewhere else we'll see using 32. Either way, it's a really tiny amount of information, right? You can have all sorts of programs and everything that you have a lot more information being stored than, uh, than 16 or 32 variables. Okay, but all right, we'll see how we handle that those scenarios later on. Key thing about the registers, right, is they're fast, right? They're really fast. We can write to them really quickly, um, and we can read from them very quickly. And we will see how there's slower places where we can store information. We'll deal with that later. Okay, so one thing I can do is I'm going to use some instruction here called move. I'm just going to move a couple values into these registers. All right, all I'm going to do is um, what this is equivalent to is setting maybe B equal to five and C equal to four, okay? Now I'm gonna assume that we're gonna use register one for B and register two for C for now, okay? This stands for move, right? And um, all that's doing is initializing these registers. So if I execute this, okay, I could come over here and I could see that the registers, after I ran that short little assembly program, I could look at the registers, I can actually see their contents now. And I can see them in hex, binary, or, or base 10, or right? decimal, whatever, whatever you want. Okay, now if I want to write, and notice I'm do, as I'm doing comments with the um, semicolon, if I wanna add these numbers, I can say, I want to add, I want to store the result in R0, and this is going to be the equivalent of A equals B plus C. Okay. All right, so add, notice the, notice the similar format, right? You have at the beginning on the left-hand side is the operation. What are you asking the processor to do? The first thing here is the destination. What's being written to typically? right and to the left you have the source right what are you reading in this case we're reading some absolute numbers right that i'm putting in the program but they can also be registers that we're reading and if we run that right we're going to get our basic like we're reading register one and two adding them together and storing the result in register zero okay so a takeaway right we always 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 want to be reading and writing from registers Okay, we will see how we can store information other places later, right? Uh, but the registers, because they're so fast, the access times, right? We, we do all of our math, any sort of our comparisons, any sort of like, you know, if you're, you're any of the thing that you're, you're doing in terms of the active logic of the program, you're doing in registers, okay? And if you need to put some information and store it away for later, we'll see how we can do that. Like if you're going to write some information and you're going to leave it there and you're going to come back to it at a later point and you don't care if it's really slow to, to get at that information later on, we, we're going to see how we can do that, okay? But that's for another day. All right, now, what I want us to think about next is, well, what happens, actually, let me, let me do it this way. Okay, what happens if we have an a expression like this? Okay, let's imagine we're doing some math and we wanted to have, we got a whole bunch of um, variables, uh, integers in a language like C, and we wanna add and subtract from them and store the results in F. Okay. Well, the thing is, this is one line of code in C to do this, right? One line of code. That is not the case in assembly, right? And assembly is giving you an understanding of what the underlying hardware is doing because the underlying hardware is not doing that in one swoop. It's not doing it as one operation. 
right? There's many little sub operations that are taking place as part of this expression, okay? We have multiple places where we're adding, we have somewhere we're subtracting, right? And at all times we need to be aware of where is information being stored, okay? So we could break this expression up here. We can break that up into multiple tiny little steps, right? Adding G and H and storing the result in some sort of temporary location. Here I'm labeling it as T0. Right, an assembly. It looks kind of like this. We're not. We haven't assigned registers yet, but we can do that next. Right. We're adding G and H. We're storing the result in some sort of temporary location. Right. So we've done this. Right. Then we could take that result, and actually this should be T zero. Okay. We take that result and subtract it by J. Right. Here's kind of logically what we're doing. Here's it in assembly. Okay. Then we can do K plus L, store the result in a different temporary location. K plus L, store it in a temporary location, right? And then we do this final add here with the two temporaries together, storing them in F. Okay. Now, the key thing is in reality to do this, right, we need to be thinking of where the registers are. What are the registers that we're doing? Now, notice here we have um, six variables. But we actually use in this, when we're doing this here, we're using more than that, right? We're actually using eight, right? We're actually using eight because we have these temporaries in here, right? Um, we need to be aware of where we're storing information along during the process. And if we don't use temporaries, um, some temporary registers to store information, we're going to overwrite some of the original information as part, you know, like either overwrite G or, or something else. Okay. So we can assign some registers. Maybe we could do something like this. We'll just make them up. Right. We'll say, we'll just kind of list the variable names. Okay. And then we'll also have our, um, we'll come back to the temporaries, but maybe we just say, okay, this is going to be R0, R1, R2. R3, R4, uh, R5, and then maybe our temporaries we'll do is R6 and R7, okay? Um, so we've got these, um, you know, this, this way of um, assigning some, um, you know, some values to these things, right? To these different variables. And if I come over here, Right, we can write this. Um, we can go ahead and write this in our in assembly. I'm going to make a little comment here. Comments are definitely your friend in assembly because they make things very, you know, it's, it's, it is hard to read at times. Okay, and um, as we go through this, right, and I can even come back and let's even take some of our notes here of how we had this uh, laid out, and we'll come in here and we'll let's make this proper. Uh, assembly, right? So we said that T0 was going to be, I think, 6, R6, right? We'll just look at our mappings, right? If we look at our um, our mappings, we said that uh, T0 is R6, and we were going to use, say, G as R1, R1, R2, right? So we've got, we have to use, like I said, we have to use um, register numbers for, for all of these things, okay? Okay, um, I'll keep it all capitalized. Right, and we can even, well, what's a really good habit to get into is having little comments here of what's going on, right? So we've got T0, right, equals the G plus H, right? It make, the little comments are your friends, they, right? They make it a lot easier to find problems that might occur in your logic if you have to, de, you know, if you're going through and debugging things. Um, T1 is our K plus L. And then our F is our T0 plus T1, okay? Um, now, right now, if I ran this, 
everything's going to be zero because everything's initialized if all of our registers is zero. So we can we can plop some numbers into these things like initialize stuff uh, just to give something kind of more interesting to work with, right? Um, if I say like let's go ahead and and say that G is going to be I don't know five. Um, Right, we can start plopping numbers in here and notice that in terms of the syntax, if I'm giving a number that's being used um, in the language itself, I need the hash, um, the pound symbol, okay? And we'll wrap this up, um, you know, shortly here. Uh, we'll just, let's just kind of confirm that things are working. Let me give a smaller number. Um, okay. And if I run this, right, when I ran it, we could go and we can check all of the results here. Right, we can trace everything. Notice, and here I'll put everything in base ten or you know decimal, so just kind of make it a little easier to read. Um, that um, notice that we are writing to our temporaries that we're using here along the way. Okay, um, and if we go and we kind of add it up, and you know, so we have G plus um, H eleven, right? minus three, eight, right? And then we had our seven plus 10, 17, and then we had our eight plus 17, 25. So everything worked correctly, okay? So notice one thing I wanna kind of point out is it took us four lines of assembly, um, really these four, because we we're kind of skipping the initialization piece, these four lines to do what is one line in C, right? Why was it four? Well, we have four operations, right? Three addition and one subtraction, okay? Um, and so how the, this is giving a sense of what the processor is actually doing. The processor is actually doing, right? Three additions and a subtraction in that computing of that one C instruction to actually compute that result, okay? Um, and it's very common for writing something that does the same thing as something in C to take quite a bit longer uh, when you're doing it in assembly language, okay? Um, we could look at documentation, right? If we look at the so-called ARM green sheet, right? This is the instruction set. This tells all of the different operations um, that the processor that supports this instruction set can run, right? Um, and we're looking at a couple of the ones like add and subtract and everything, but there's, you know, there's obviously, um, you know, additional, um, lots of additional, uh, instructions that we're going to be learning as we kind of move forward. Okay. But, um, this video is designed to kind of give you just to kind of summarize what we've, we've talked about is, uh, the goal of this video is making sure that you're able to understand that one, right? All the variables have to be that we're anything that we're reading or writing to is part of our from a processor's viewpoint or what we're doing in assembly we want it to be in a register okay so we do some any sort of math and assignment we're putting them in the registers as part of that um, operation okay and that um, getting us used to what that syntax is what does it look like to do that right it's all following a similar format where we have the destination two sources and on the left hand side is the operation what we're asking the processor to do um, and if we take some sort of uh, expression uh, in a higher level language such as C, it's going to be broken out into multiple um, separate instructions to actually compute the result. Okay, we'll get more experience as we move forward. It'll the, the doing some of the hands-on exercises will really let it sink in. Uh, but this is a good kind of way of just jumping in and starting to get your feet wet.